Hi, I'm Marty Nimco. Stephen Colbert coined the term truthiness, which refers to an assertion that seems true, but, well, may not be true. In our heated times, it appears that truthiness has proliferated. Well, to come to the rescue, we might invoke one of psychology's core principles, validity. It's a concept that's familiar to anyone who's taken the Intro to Psych course. They know the uh, concept of validity and its four flavors, con content validity, face validity, predictive validity, and construct validity. Well, let's start with face validity. It's the easiest. And it means, on its face, does a test seem valid? For example, an intelligence tests questions that tap abstract reasoning would seem to have face validity. The concept of face validity could be applied far more broadly to a wide range of assertions, where face validity means, does it make sense? For example, let's say someone argues that a computerized tutorial can individualize instruction more easily than can a live teacher. While you would want more information before agreeing or disagreeing that computerized tutorials are a good idea or preferable to live teachers, that assertion does comport with common sense and therefore has some face validity. Content validity. That means, does a test fully sample the domain of knowledge being tested? So a test on 20th century American history that omitted the civil rights movement would be deficient in content validity. Like face validity, that has broader implica implications, broader applicability. For example, if a newscaster's advocacy for mass COVID testing and tracing didn't point out the weaknesses of that, it wouldn't have su in sufficient content validity. Predictive validity. Now, that's widely considered validity's most important form, so I'll give it a little more time here. Predictive validity refers to a test's success in predicting current or future performance. For example, there's strong data to support the SAT being moderately predictive of college performance. More broadly, study after study finds, alas, that the media's predictors are no better than a coin toss, whether political pundits, investment so-called gurus, or sports prognosticators. Take our issue du jour, COVID. Both right and left have egg on their face. For example, a front page story in the New York Times reported that conservative pundits, notably Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh, underplayed COVID's severity, while the National Review pointed to liberal pundits underestimating COVID. For example, it cites that New York Times columnist Farhad Manju on January 29th, two days before Trump banned Chinese nationals from coming to the US, Manju wrote, quote, Alarm about the virus was unwarranted. The real concern was, quote, not the illness itself, but the amped up, ill-considered way our frightened world might respond to it. And finally, construct validity. And that means a test whose items, and probably sections, map well against a well-regarded theory. For example, a test of creativity should have items that reflect a respected model of creativity, for example, the 4C model. In deciding what to believe more broadly, we need to ask ourselves whether an idea is consistent with a well-established principle or two. For example, it's argued that more redistribution to the poor will achieve greater good. How well does that map against psychology's core principle of behaviorism? That is, we get more of what we reward, less of what we punish. How well does that argument comport with the core economic concept of opportunity cost? Takeaway? We are bombarded with rhetoric, often heated. It may help us make more rational decisions if we consider them in light of psychology's four types of validation. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemco. I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments, and I especially like it if you hit the share button below, share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. And in any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.